Today, I'll take you through the process of this scar cover-up Robin Bird tattoo, from preparation to the finished tattoo. I decided to also show you the drawing process, because it is as important as the tattooing itself. My client requested a bird with fly, agaric, mushrooms, and flowers on her leg. She sent me a photo of the body area beforehand and marked how big she wanted the design to be. Now, I'm tracing the body area and roughly sketching the shape of the design. I divide the image into three parts. The middle part is for the bird since it's the central main motif. The upper and lower parts are for the mushrooms. I'll include the fly agaric mushroom twice since they have a strong color, and it looks nice when they appear twice in the image, but I will go into more detail why I place each element in this way later on. I found a bird on Pinterest that I think fits the motif well, and incorporate it into the image. I'll remove the opacity again and now sketch out the bird's body structure to ensure anatomical accuracy. I do this by roughly drawing the lines. For nearly all animal motifs, I use a suitable reference. This makes it easier to depict the anatomy accurately. I'm already working with thin and thick lines. I'm attempting to draw the lines in a way that will make it easier for me when adding colors later on. This involves marking where lighter and darker areas will be. Remember, this is just the very first rough sketch. It will be further refined. After roughly sketching the outlines of the bird, I move it to the edge of the picture. I do this so that I still have the bird as a reference, but it no longer distracts me from the drawing. Now I'm drawing for the first time with more precise lines and adding a bit more detail to the bird. As you can see, there are many playful fine lines in the design. I draw these lines, for instance, around color edges, or to highlight a particularly dark or light area of the picture. For the lines, I use a specific pen from the airbrush set in Procreate. I've adjusted the stabilization to suit my needs. I'll show you this on the side. With this pen, it's easier to draw beautiful lines. Additionally, I use various sizes of this pen to create both thick and thin lines. Generally, I only use a few different brushes in Procreate. For lines as discussed, the medium coverage airbrush. For filling areas, the strongly covering airbrush. For soft transitions, the lightly covering airbrush. For text, the brush named Script in the Calligraphy category. For sketchy lines, the Narender pen from the Sketch category. And for drawing body parts, the Body Maps pen, which I had to purchase separately as it's not included in the set. As I continue to sketch the motif, I want to talk to you about the design's composition, the structure of the design, I will display the tattoo on the screen for you and highlight the area I'm discussing, so you can easily follow along. Most of the time, I decide to place the main motif in the center and surround it with decorative elements. I personally often choose floral elements as a frame. I arranged the mushrooms so that they appear twice in the image at the top and bottom. I didn't place them all in one spot because the fly agarics have a very prominent color. Then, from a distance, there would be too much red in one place. So, we've distributed the red to two spots. If you're unsure about this, draw rough color patches on your sketch and take a look at the motif from a distance. You can also round off a motif with colors, for example, by having the same color at the top and bottom. I will show you some of my tattoos which I have color coordinated so you know what I mean. For the flowers, on the other hand, I chose a subtle color, simply because the bird and mushrooms should be the focus and the flowers are meant to be a background element. I arranged the flowers to round off the motif. I also chose small flowers because I already have three larger elements in the image. 
the bird and the fly agarics. I think playing with colors is very important. Let them reappear throughout the motif. The gray in the mushrooms also appears in the bird. The pink in the flowers appears again in the mushrooms. Repetitions bring harmony to the image. I personally also mostly use only two strong colors and try to keep the rest more subdued, to not overcrowd the image. In this picture, the strongest colors are red and orange. One reason why I started to take the most interest in the neo-traditional style, on my journey to becoming a tattoo artist, is that the neo-traditional style is a fusion of traditional tattoos and realistic elements. It incorporates the traditional thick lines along with realistic proportions and many fine details. Color gradients are much softer than in the traditional style, yet it features harder contours than the realistic style. As we're nearing the end of the sketch, I'll reduce the opacity once more and neatly trace the lines one last time, so I can use it directly as a stencil. Since I'll be using a thermal printer, the lines need to be clear, dark, and bold enough. Our template is now ready and thus we're moving on to tattooing. Since you had some questions about the machine and needles after the last video, I'd like to introduce you to my machine and needles. I've been using the Hawk Pen with a 3.5 mm stroke for years because I personally find it very comfortable to hold. For my next machine, I'm considering using a wireless one for even more freedom of movement. But for now, I'll stick with my Hawk model. What's also very important to me in a tattoo machine is that it's not too heavy and doesn't vibrate too strongly, as it allows me to work with precision. I adjust the speed of the Hawk Pen for lining to 110 with the 10 round liner. For the 3 round liner, I set it to 90 and for very fine details on the face, sometimes even as low as 70. For shading and filling, I set the machine speed to 120. For the lining needles, I use 0.35mm 10 round liners and 0.30mm 3 round liners. Most of the time, I have the needle adjusted all the way out when I am making lines because I personally like to see the needle while working, but it's a matter of preference. Some people don't extend the needle nearly as far. When it comes to lining, I also try to minimize wiping over the tattoo as much as possible, primarily to avoid smudging the stencil but also to reduce irritation to the skin. Wiping too dry and too much over the tattoo can make the session more painful for the client and may shorten the session, so I aim to dab lightly when lining. With the lining done, we're moving on to the color. I've chosen to start with the fly agaric mushrooms because they have the darkest and strongest tones, namely red. If we would to lighter tones first and then the red tones afterward, the colors could blend under the skin. That's why we always work from the darkest to the lightest color. I'll start with the dark red shadows on the fly agaric mushroom. I want these to have a nice gradient, working from dark to light. I transition from dark red to medium red, then to light red, and finally to pink. This creates a beautiful gradient.
For the mushrooms, I mostly used the 10 round liners because it's challenging to get into the gaps with the magnum. I only used the magnum to fill in the larger areas. After completing all the fly agaric mushrooms, we'll start with the bird's body. For this, I'm using a 15 magnum soft edge at a speed of 120. I'll begin again with the darker parts of the bird. Areas where shadows fall, for example. For the orange part of the robin, it may appear at first glance to be just orange, but in reality, it includes dark brown, dark orange, gertoned orange, yellow orange, and highlights in skin color. As I continue working on the bird, I'd like to share some information about scars. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, some scars are being covered in this tattoo as well. I'll briefly touch on the topic of scars in this video and give you a little insight. There are many different types of scars and the approach to tattooing varies depending on the type. Especially when scars are relatively new and not very thick, one must proceed with caution. Particularly with fine lines, there can be a tendency for a blowout to occur. The scars for this tattoo are old and not particularly thick, so it's not too difficult to cover them. However, when designing the motif, I decided, for example, not to place the bird's head with all its intricacies directly over the scars, but rather to focus them mainly on the bird's body. Whenever possible, I always use coarser, less detailed, and non-central parts of the design to cover scars. To sum it up, scars must be completely healed before getting a tattoo. If the scar is unstable, there's a risk of the tattoo being negatively affected, such as a blowout. When choosing a design, consider the thickness and size of the scar, as well as the fact that lines may not look straight over scars due to their raised texture. From my perspective, I believe that larger, more solid designs are especially well suited for scars. If you're wondering why I didn't tattoo directly over all the scars, the reason is that the client didn't want a scar cover-up but rather wanted the tattoo in that spot, which happens to have scars. So, it's not a classic cover-up. Let's talk about white ink. White is very important for setting accents and bringing the motif to life. In this case, I'm using a size 10 round liner needle and letting it protrude maximally from the needle module. When using white, I never try to use it extensively, but rather only tattoo small areas with it because white tends to look blotchy in large areas. I'm aware that these tutorials can be very complicated for beginners, so I'm asking you, what would you like to see on my channel? Feel free to write it in the comments, and if possible, I'll make my next video on that topic. Also, let me know if you want to see advanced content or beginner content, Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.